We're the Macomb County Genealogy Group. Welcome. This is our MCGG Friday and MCGG Let's Talk Genealogy Combined Virtual Meeting, October 7th, 2020. Our topic tonight, how to begin online genealogy, presented by Lisa Eschenberg, MCGG Chairperson. As a reminder, materials presented by our guest speakers are the work and copyright of the author's presenters. Please respect their copyrights. Welcome to our presentation meeting on how to begin online genealogy presented by Lisa Eschenberg. For those who are new to our group, we typically run two public meetings per month before COVID-19, a roundtable meeting on the second Wednesday of each month, and a speaker presentation meeting on the first Friday. While we are getting our feet wet with online meetings, we have cut back to one meeting a month on the second Wednesday, alternating format between roundtable and presentations. Some announcements. Ann Faulkner has resigned as the chairperson of the Macomb County Genealogy Group. Lisa Eschenberg has stepped up as our new chairperson to try to fill Ann's shoes. Lisa will continue in her role as chairperson facilitator of our roundtable meetings, and I will continue to MC our presentation meetings. Don't worry, Ann has not gone far. She will continue to serve on our board as our treasurer, so we still have a, her immense knowledge base available to us. We also have added Teresa Mann to our board and she will serve as the chairperson of our volunteers. Other board members are Gail Schulte, our secretary, and Bill Cruel. Other news, the Macomb County Genealogy Group created a YouTube channel. The link for the YouTube channel is found in, I, I've placed in the chat and you're welcome to um, click it and link to it. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of new content. Uh, we are recording tonight's meeting and if all goes well, we will post the video to the YouTube channel soon. Our next meeting will be Wednesday, November 18th at 7 p.m. here on Zoom. The roundtable discussion will be, where do I go from here? Bring research questions, brick walls, or new finds to share with the group. Since meetings, Zoom meeting is a new format to us, and this is our first presentation using Zoom meeting, some reminders about etiquette during the presentation. Please keep your microphone muted during the chat. Um, any background noise that, that happens in your ears can pull the audio away from the speaker as we've already seen. If you have a question, please enter it into the chat. I will be monitoring the chat and feed your questions to Lisa when appropriate. If you have the same question as someone else, put a me too. If several people have the same question, I may interrupt Lisa. However, we plan on catching up catching most of the questions at the end unless she answers them during the presentation. After the presentation, we plan on opening the floor to questions. Please keep your microphone muted unless you are asking a question. Again, unexpected background noise can pull uh, attention away from the person who's actually speaking. Now on to our presentation. Most of you know Lisa. She blames her dad and her brother for being here. Dad wanted to know if his ancestor was a drummer in the Revolutionary War. He was too young, or, and her brother kept bringing home crib notes on her mom's family found in the newspaper on microfilm. Because of that, she now has 20 years of genealogy research experience behind her, and hopefully more than that ahead of her, stymied with her own non-German line. At the time, she went on to research her more than 80% German roots. In order to do that, she had to teach herself how to do it in order to succeed. She is a member of the New England Historic Genealogical Society, the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society, and the Durham Singletary Family Connections, now also known as the Durham Genealogy Research Association. Lisa is now the chairperson of the Macomb County Genealogy Group after being a longtime board member, the group's webmaster, tweeter, pinner, and chairperson of the Macomb County Genealogy Group's Let's Talk discussion group. She was the primary writer of the Macomb County Genealogy Group's last two workshops and has been involved with the Macomb County Genealogy Group's church book scanning project. Lisa has been a volunteer in the genealogy and local history room of the Mount Clemens Public Library for almost as long as she's been a serious researcher. And she has been the guest speaker on a variety of topics for local genealogical and historical groups. Lisa is still working on her one known non-German line, now using DNA to aid her. Please join me in welcoming Lisa. 
All right, everyone. Tonight we will take a quick look at doing genealogy and talk about a variety of websites to do online genealogy. So you could just tumble into doing genealogy, but having a bit of foreknowledge is usually more productive. Um, so read up genealogy how-to book, either in physical or ebook format, from a bookstore, your local library, a website store, or use a credible website for how-to information in text or video format. This should give you a foundation to start with, but in the meantime, here's a quick overview. Most genealogists will tell you that the best practice is to start with yourself and work backwards in time, generation to generation. This keeps you, hopefully, in your own tree. If you start with a supposed claimed ancestor, you risk never finding yourself. So start with what you and your family knows and the documents in your home, but not just in your home, but also your parents, your grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, any possible relative who might have something on the family. So online genealogy really starts offline. Tonight, I'm overviewing or breaking down the process of genealogy into three areas or leaves. We're going to stay broad rather than get into specifics, which should give us enough time to cover the online aspect and finish with a Q&A. The first area is determine what you know and don't know. This area is where you gather, interview, organize, and plan. I've mentioned that the best practice is to start with yourself and work backwards in time, generation to generation. So start with what you and your family knows and gather the documents in your home, but not just in your home, but also your parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, any possible relative who might have something on the family. But do not wait until you have all the documents. Interview your relatives. Start with the elders so you do not lose their knowledge and their stories. Don't know what to ask? A simple internet search may yield many ideas for questions. Organize what you have learned with standard genealogy forms or an online tree, personal or community collaborative type, or genealogy software, both of which are essentially linked electronic versions of the paper forms. The value of organizing with genealogy forms, an online tree, or a genealogy program is you are able to more clearly see what you know and what you don't know. So now you can decide what you want to learn, your questions and goals, and make that a research plan. Don't worry, it can be simple as a list of what you want to learn. This brings us to our second area, identify and locate record sources and search. From your research plan goals, list of questions, identify which record source types might contain the needed answers. It's usually not too hard to reason out what record types might contain an answer. My advice is do not stop at indexes or abstracts. Always try to see the original record or image of the original. Once you know what type of record or records you need, then you need to locate where to find those records for the location and time frame you need. Check a website's card catalog of database collections. You can learn about identifying and locating records from how-to books or the Family Search Research Wiki, which is a free website with tons of help resources related to genealogy. Then search for those identified records for your ancestors. There are a wide variety of source records out there. I advise you that there are four basic sources that are a good starting point for most people. These are census, vital records, newspapers, and cemeteries. From the documents in the home and these four basic sources expand out to other records. There's a large variety. You may have some at home, but you might have to seek them out online or in person when we're able to do so again. Refer to the Gone Researching source list for the various record types that are usually sought out and refer to the Family Search Research Wiki for help on what to seek to answer specific questions and where to locate those records for your locations and time periods. This is the second page of the handout that was emailed to everyone. That leaves us with the third area, analyze, record, and cite, educate, and expand. 
Whenever you search for information records, analyze what you are searching looking at for each person family. Whenever you enter information into your forms or genealogy tree, online or program, analyze what you are recording for each person family. Does it make sense? The dates, the locations, are there two people with the same name and they're getting confused? Did your relative not recall or remember something correctly? Or dang, granny's memory is sharp as a tack? Remember, searching is fun, but recording and organizing what you find is important. As you record what you know, you will better see what you do not know. Also, don't forget to record, track your research results on your research plan so you know what you have done and whether it was successful or not. You wouldn't want to repeat a task unnecessarily. Normally I would say, give me a show of hands if you've ever unintentionally repeated a search. I think most of us have done this at least once start, since starting genealogy. And cite your sources as you enter your information. Record how you learned a fact so that you or someone else can find it back later. Your future self will thank you. I know this overview sounds like a lot, but really just take it one question and search at a time and always have fun. Take some time to educate yourself. Either read genealogy how-to books starting with how to begin and then add specific subjects when needed, Physical books or ebooks from libraries, bookstores, shopping websites are available. Or use websites, read, view credible how to websites like the Family Search Research Wiki, the Help Learning sections of genealogy websites, or use how to videos in archive webinars. And attend meetings or, of or join a local genealogy society. Check their websites too. There are lots of ways to learn. And expand beyond the easy things. Got ancestry that is not English? Don't be afraid to do foreign language research. You really don't need to be fluent in language to understand enough to do genealogy. Consider adding DNA. You can do genealogy without DNA, but you can't do DNA without genealogy if you wanna understand how you are related to your DNA matches. DNA is a big topic, but there are a variety of ways to learn about it. That is our quick, broad genealogy overview. So read up or watch up on the how-to and decide which method of organizing what you learn about your family works best for you. Using genealogy paper forms, a genealogy program, or an online tree. Note that online trees can be either the personal tree type that you alone control or a community collaborative type that is shared with everyone working on the same tree. Decide which works best for you. Okay, that is our quick, broad genealogy overview. So let's turn our attention to the online portion, starting off with some advice and tips. Realize that not everything is online. There is a lot online, but not everything's out there yet. Judge the usefulness of a website based on what it has to offer your specific research needs. Everyone's needs are different. There are free websites and pay sites. Try to use the free ones before spending your money on the pay ones. It just makes sense. As you search or research, be sure to add the information found and its source citation to your chosen organization method. Doing this keeps you up to date and you don't end up with a pile of files, either physical or on your computer, waiting to be entered. A tip I feel very strongly about is to view you receive the actual record digitized counts whenever possible. It is better than just using indexes, abstracts, or transcriptions, all of which usually lack some details and could potentially introduce errors. After forming your research plan, elaborate or simple, pick a question or goal to answer. Determine what source records might answer the question and what websites hold those needed source records. If you know you need a death record for a certain year and location, check a website's card catalog of database collections to see if what you're searching for might be there. If you need help, try using the Family Search Research Wiki, I'll say this a lot tonight, to lead you in the right direction. There is also the help area of genealogy websites to utilize. 
where to begin? Let's talk about the larger genealogy sites out there. The most important is FamilySearch, I think, because it's free and has tons of record types from around the world. It has been digitizing its vast microfilm collection of records where possible, and newer records are even reproduced born digital, never having been microfilmed. Some records can be viewed from home, some while at FamilySearch affiliates, like our favorite library, Mount Clemens Public Library. Uh, some can only be viewed at family history centers. The closest one is in Bloomfield Hills for us, or the family history library in Salt Lake City, Utah. Thankfully, a lot can be viewed at home or wherever else you are while we wait to be able to visit our favorite libraries again. The other three larger sites are pay sites, but each has an institutional version, usually called library edition, which gives you access to most of what is available on the home subscription version from the comfort of the library. Essentially, the non-personalized areas of the website are what you have access to in library edition. The three larger sites are similar, but there are differences. All have a variety of records from around the world, some are the same and yet each have different records, the others do not. All three have member trees, autosomal DNA, when you're looking at the home versions. Some people have trees or DNA on more than one site, but others may be only on one site. Now here's the good news. ProQuest, the distributor, and Ancestry have extended the temporary free remote access to Ancestry Library Edition until the end of December. So you go to the website of the library that issued your library card sign in and then click that website's link to Ancestry Library Edition. All the suburban library cooperative libraries are taking part in this. For Michigan residents, you all have remote access normally to the MyHeritage Library Edition through the Michigan Electronic Library, MEL.org website. And if you are a Michigan resident or attending a Michigan college university, you can apply for a free Library of Michigan library card to gain temporary remote access to a variety of genealogy websites. Now, these larger genealogy websites are not the only ones out there. As you move to the smaller genealogy websites, some may hold a variety of records too, or they may be more specialized. A couple other pay sites are full3.com, which has mostly US military records focus, but does have some non-military collections and some free databases like the War of 1812 pension files. And there is American Ancestors, which is the website of the New England Historic Geological Society. Access to the website comes with membership, but it does have a standard group of free databases. And usually the first 30 days of a new database are open for free access. Both of these sites have institution subscriptions. So some libraries may offer these to patrons for in-library use. Our favorite library, Mount Clemens Public Library, has these two sites as part of its in-library use subscriptions. Hopefully, we will someday soon be in the library again. So these are the big websites with a sort of specialization. And then there are specialized sites like a church library and archive that is digitizing colonial church books. I'm gonna to try to cover a variety of different sites, but obviously I can't cover them all. Often there are variety of sites focused on one aspect like digitized newspapers or cemeteries. Some sites like the Ancestor Hunt, which is a free blog site with tons of newspaper links actually direct you to other sites where the records are located. Some sites may be free, some may be pay. Um, one site that is free is Inc. Our Digital World site. And some pay versions are uh, newspapers.com and algibank.com. Besides a cemetery having a website itself nowadays, Google it to find out, the two main sites, Find a Grave and Billion Graves, are based on volunteer submitted information. There are a lot of websites out there. Google your ancestor. You won't know what you will find until you try it. Looking for a book? Try Google or try WorldCat to find the nearest library near to you that has it. If the book isn't close enough, see if it's on Internet Archive. Did you know having a user account at Internet Archive lets you check out a digital book just like at the library? And it's free. 
Cindy's List is another index or card catalog of local history and genealogy websites that helps you find what is out there. Check websites of state libraries and archives, local libraries and archives, local genealogical sites for your own locality and the locality where your ancestors lived. There's lots out there and you may be surprised what you will find. So far, we've taken a look at websites from the U.S. point of view, but there is a lot more out there. If you have Canadian ancestors, look at the Library and Archives of Canada website and its ancestor search of database. Some records images from the LAC databases are actually on another site, Heritage, so you use the two together. Some are linked and some you have to drill down yourself to find the record image. Um, a related site is Canadiana, which uh, has additional digitized records. They may not be electronically indexed and linked, but each are worth poking around. You'll never know what you'll discover till you try. Ontario's Land Registry Office, this is where you find the deeds and the mortgages, has switched to an online presence. So you won't be going into uh, making an in-person visit anymore. Some records that uh, deed records you may find accessible on Family Search. The thing to note with the Ontario Land Registry is that it kind of has set hours for searching because it updates frequently. So it's not a site that you're going to be able to look at in the middle of the night when the internet's faster. A little frustrating for sometimes. Got French Canadian roots? There are a variety of records searchable at PRDH with, for those with French Canadian roots. Got roots on Prince Edward Island? There is a variety of records from the Prince Edward Island archives. These are just a few of them out here. Were your ancestors more international? There are a variety of websites out there to help you too. For German Evangelisch, Church records, there is archeon.de website. It's a pay site and many images are digitized in color, which is really nice if you've seen some pretty bad um, microfilmed ones. But um, some of these have never been on microfilm or accessible to us in the United States. They're still adding. I'm still waiting for a couple of my areas. More church books are available at Matricula. It's free and it covers a variety of European countries. I'm not Italian and I know I'm going to slaughter this word. Ant in Ati, which is the website of the Italian State Archives, is where you can find some Italian records, uh, civil records, military, notarial, um, from various areas of Italy. Think you've got a pilgrim that was in Leiden? Check out the Dutch site, um, meet your Pilgrim Ancestor. It's got, you can search for uh, a pilgrim's name and it should bring up some records if they were there. There is the Dutch Archives site, which is a variety of Dutch archives, uh, Vivas V. It's free. And then there's some Dutch and Belgium records at Open Arc. Um, and then if you've got Swedish ancestors, you're really going to want to look at Archive Digital. It's a pay site, but twice a year generally it has a free access weekend. And we generally try to point this out on uh, our blog site. The site's in English and Swedish. Of course, the digitized records are in Swedish. But I believe if I recall right, one of the free access weekends is January or February and the other will be coming up in November. And then there's Januki, which is a reference site for UK and Ireland genealogy. So, Remember to cite your sources as you enter your information. Record how you learned a fact so that you or someone else can find it back later. And yes, I know you heard this before, but it's really important to remember to cite your sources. Confused about source citations? Many websites have some sort of citation for each record image. It may appear with the abstracted search results, or on the page with the record image. It's going to vary by website. Use that to help you form your search source citation. Remember, just take it one question and search at a time and always have fun. So during these COVID-19 pandemic times, there have been various free access offers. Some are still active. ProQuest, as I mentioned, and Ancestry have extended the temporary free remote access to Ancestry Library Edition till December 31st. 
and my Heritage Library Edition, for those of you who are Michigan residents, you have free remote access to that year round. Just go to mel.org and um, it should recognize that you're in Michigan. Otherwise, you'll enter in your Michigan driver's license or your Michigan library card from any library that's participating. And of course, you can get a Library of Michigan library card for free. You can request it online. And it takes a couple days, uh, business days, and it will get you free remote access to Ancestry Library Edition, Fold 3, Michigan History Magazine, My Heritage Library Edition, um, Newspaper Archive, new, newspapers.com, and the Detroit Free Press Historical Newspapers, 1831 to 1999. And just keep an eye out for free access. You usually will start seeing some of that around the holidays. And that's the end of the slide. Choose the way you want to organize, either paper forms or a genealogy program or an online tree. And if you have an Ancestry online tree and the information you're finding is not an Ancestry, you'll manually enter it in and add it to your online tree. Of course, you won't be able to see an on online tree if you're using the library edition, but you can use another browser and bring up the home version of Ancestry, which trees are a free area, so you can create a tree there without having to have the database subscription. Okay, Bob, do we have any questions? Nobody typed any questions into the chat, so I okay. think we can open it up for um, questions at this point. If anybody wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, go ahead. <laughs> Got a question about a website? I can show you that. Lisa, this is Luann, and I do have a question. Sure, go ahead. But it's not necessarily about any of the websites that you. Okay, that's to fine. With, it has to do with um, saving where you found information. You know, okay. like many of us will find a death certificate, and so you will, you know, save a copy of that on your computer somewhere or whatever. So, okay. but my question is. <clears throat> um, Say the documentation is um, from the 1940 census. Do you, <laughs> because it, it gets to be a lot of saving, do you save a copy of that census in a file on your computer or do you just note that that's where it is and you hope that that 1940 census will always be there for you to view? Um, I don't trust. <laughs> so I what I do either. is I do, I do download the image um, and um, there's various ways you can organize your electronic files. Um, either one folder called genealogy or something, or like Family Tree Maker is, for an example, generally sets up a, a media folder. And so its tendency is to naturally just put all the images in that media folder. So what I would suggest that that's one perfectly logical way to do it. Everything's in one spot, but you're going to want to have a good naming structure for your files so that you know what you're looking at. And you can do that manually yourself, you know, call it a genealogy folder and dump all your genealogy files in it. Or you could set up a system that um, for this family, unit either do it by your grandparents or however you want to structure it set up folders by the family unit and um, save them that way um, you may want to um, buy an external drive so that every, all the your genealogy stuff is on one uh, drive and then you just attach it the drive the external drive when you're working on your tree a lot of computers are coming with smaller solid state drives and if they don't have a second drive in there that's larger, um, you're going to run out of room real quick. So an external drive is one way to handle all the images. Because, of course, genealogy can't involve little stuff. Does that help? Yeah, yeah. I just, um, yeah, I, I, I thought, man, does, does Lisa and everybody else, do they save every... U.S. Census, you know, you find, you know, your cousin so-and-so, you know, your, you know, your parents, cousins, cousins, whatever, on some uh, uh, U.S. Census. And I thought, is everybody saving all these censuses on their computer or are they just documenting 
what census well, it was. Some people just document, but then, you know, if you've got to stop your ANSYS, ANSYS, your subscription to the website, mm -hmm. then you generally lose access to the images. Right. So if you don't want to lose access to your images, it's for your advantage to download yeah, to them. Save, to save the uh, actual. To save them, yeah. yeah. And if I might add, normally those images are JPEGs, so they don't take up a lot of space on your right. hard drive. Right. Right. Um, I probably have on my photo drive about 10,000 photos and 5,000 records, genealogy images just from, uh, just from my stuff. Plus, I have thousands of images w working on the, um, the church book program over the years that are still sitting on my computer. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Well, anyway, that you an, you answered my question, so I'll I'll make, I'm just gonna start be sure I'm saving every one again. So, <laughs> all the U.S. Census. I mean, like I said, I, I would you know save um, oh articles out of a paper that I saw or um, you know um, death certificates, birth certificates, baptismal certificates, and everything. But my my you know main question was like the U.S. Census, and I'm like. Man, sometimes, you know, you think it's always going to be there, but it's not. And we all learned that, you know. Right. Always... And yes. you, you may be in a place where you, you really need to reference it and there's no internet. True. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, everyone thinks internet's all over the place, but not necessarily. <laughs> Right. And also on those census records, one tip, if like I've been researching for over 20 years, if if you have the image you pulled down when you start first started researching, go back and get a better, go back and get a new one because most of those records have been redigitized re and they're oh. a little bit cleaner than they used to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, getting a small portable USB drive that are low cost now and you can store a lot of information on them. Right. Yes. And, you know, the holidays are coming up. Those things go on sale. Yep. Exactly, yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Friday day is coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that too. You don't have to be Prime the whole time. If you haven't had a Prime subscription in over a year, you can sign up for free for 30 days and then cancel it. That's true. Yep, yep. You'll get the, the Prime discounts and deals and whatnot. Well, Lisa, this is Bill Artsberger from SAR. I have a, a question if you have a minute. Um, thank you for the presentation, by the way. It was wonderful. Tons of great information in there. Good. I wondered Good. if I could get a copy of some of those slides so I can have the reference materials right there. How, how do I do that? Um, well, we're going to put it up, on, uh, if, uh, crossing our fingers. <laughs> uh, it will go up on the YouTube channel. Either uh, the libraries are ours, and then you can reference things there from there. Um, Lib libraries are ours YouTube channel? Yes. Our, I posted in the chat a link to our to the Macomb County Genealogy Group's YouTube channel, um, which is Mount Clemens Public Library also has a YouTube channel. So it will be on one or one or both if we, if the recording goes successfully and once we have a chance to edit out the junk. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Question, please. Sure. Yeah, you've just quoted where to find things uh is that on your normal uh genealogy website for those of us that aren't recording or writing this down um are you on our mailing list email I, you have my email yes okay so if you got the reminder email this morning no no i just signed up tonight okay what you can do is send me your email an email to the Macomb, and I'll, I'll spell it out for you, um, the Macomb Co. GG at gmail.com website, or website, <laughs> email, and I will email it to you. Um, it's M-A-C-O-M-B-C-O-G-G -G at gmail.com. I can put it in the chat box also. So let me type that in there and make sure I send it to everyone. Okay, so if you aren't on our uh, mailing list, the MCGG mailing list, um, I can get you on it if you send an email to um, the Macomb Co. GG email. Can I ask a question, Lisa, about um, Michiganology? Sure. Can, can I'll you do the best I can? <laughs> 
Go ahead. I don't think it's an easy website to follow. Um, and I'm trying to locate nat naturalization records. Could you kind of walk us through that or not? I can give it a shot. I know they're not up yet. Um, oh. Just uh, they're, they're supposedly the indexing is complete. All right. Well, even, so. Yeah, even that would help. I mean, just the yeah. indexing. Well, okay. one of the one of the problems was Family Search was doing the index, and they were just about complete before COVID started. Um, they they managed to complete it remotely, but because most people at Family Search are working from at home, and every and the archives has very limited people staff on on at any given day either, um, getting that onto Michigan Allergy as an available is turning into a really long drawn out process um, just because you've got too many people that you know actually need to to get together in a room rather than on zoom and uh, and make it happen and it just isn't going to happen for a while because of uh, because of COVID uh, so once you know they're working at it but it's moving at a snail's pace at this moment uh, plus I think there's some things that the archives needs to do with Michigan allergy to um, to make it work. They primarily just have the death records on there right now. Um, I'm gonna bring up there, the sites that I have on the handout will also take you to the other site for the, the Library of Michigan and then also the Archives of Michigan. So okay, I didn't, I didn't run that off yet, so. Okay. Leona, where, where are you looking for naturalizations? What county? Uh, it would probably be um, Genesee County, which, and, and some were also um, in Detroit, but they, they went through Great Lakes. It, what was that, Great Lakes? Or isn't it something oh, no. that went, went through Chicago or something? Well, they, well Chicago, Chicago is where all the federal records are stored. Okay. Um, now, they, if they were naturalized in Detroit, they could have naturalized in Recorder's Court, they could have naturalized in Wayne County Circuit Court, or they could have naturalized in federal court in Detroit. The only okay. records that the archives will have is for the Michigan courts, the Wayne County Circuit Court and possibly Detroit Recorder's Court. I know that um, Oakland County, for whatever reason, didn't get indexed in the, in the first round, so they're gonna have to go back and do that again after they get the records up. I don't know how much Wayne County stuff they do have although they supposedly have it. My understanding is Macomb County has the best coverage in that index, um, but it just yeah. depends on which court they they did. And with um, Wayne County, federal court was right there, so they could have just went there. Okay. Fortunately, so, well, the stuff that was all on Seeking Michigan has not made its way all the way over to Michiganology. Okay. Um, uh, Stuff that was Library of Michigan that you could pull up, like the newspapers information, is on um, the Library of Michigan site on Michigan.gov, which I think most of you know that um, they like to use the the numbers uh, for the URL addresses. So um, the, I've got the links to get you to the Library of Michigan portion on the handout, um, but there's also information on the archives there but a lot of these links take you over to Michigan algae but the stuff isn't there yet okay um, all right yeah you, you should be able to find eastern district um stuff on ancestry for you know the, you know, the index cards um and try um just in case uh leona try the flint genealogical society website and see if they have created an index to help. Okay. For the, you know, you, you mentioned Genesee County. Yes. So I would ch check out their website. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The only thing really searchable right now is the, the death records. And there you're gonna wanna go to the advanced search and do the search there or go to Ancestry. Yeah. Ancestry Library Edition. That will get you there. It'll take you to the same images.
Anyone else? Lisa, there's a there's a question in the chat okay. from Tamisha. Okay. Um, it's on DNA. Uh, what your next what is what should your next step be if you are stuck after you found DNA relatives on ancestry? Found a first cousin from my husband. He passed away last year at 99. Just not finding link. Uh, finding the link between him and his birth father. Um, Does that um, DNA match? That's a first cousin. Um, do they have any tree information out there? Yes, they, he does have a tree, but there's no link. There's nothing that I can link up to history. Oh, okay, their tree. so it's all private or something like that. No, it's just I can't find any relatives okay. that match up. Okay, so um, what you're going to want to do, you're going to go to that DNA match, and then you're going to click on the shared matches. Okay. And see who you both have in who who um your husband and that person both have in common. And then look for the ones that have trees. Now they may be a little further related from your your husband, but you kind of kind of take the information from each of the trees and try to figure out what do you all have in common. And then yeah, yeah. you do you do genealogy. <laughs> you kind of okay. from the pieces that you do have, you put on your detective hat and start detecting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, not, thank you. There's rarely a magic um answer to it. Um now uh is it are do you have your husband only at one website? When just data ancestry? Yes. When the DNA sta sales start hitting for the holidays, consider testing him at another place like um oh. 23 and me because you never know where someone else is tested. Now you could do you could do a data download from Ancestry. It leaves your stuff on Ancestry, but takes the raw DNA data information and you can upload it to Family Tree um, DNA um, for a lower price than actually testing there, and okay. um, you could see um, who you match there. Now it's a smaller database there. But um, usually you find a little bit more serious genealogist DNA researchers there. Now, you could also do the same thing, download that data, the same data, and then transfer it up to MyHeritage DNA. And that's a, for a lower price than a, a physical, you know, a brand new test there. And I think it's like, was 19, it might be $29. So at these lower prices, you can get yourself into additional DNA pools and okay. go fishing in multiple uh, places, and you might find a match that might make might put it all together. Now, Twenty Three okay. Me doesn't accept DNA data uploads, so you'd have to physically test there. But um, they generally have a holiday sale. Okay. So, it's a little bit more reasonable when you can catch them on sale. Okay. All right. I'll try them next. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. And Laura Nixon's also mentioning Jedmatch. Um, yeah, you can do Jedmatch also. Um, Jedmatch. Jedmatch. Uh, G-E-D-M-A-T-C-H dot com. I think it's dot com. Yes. Um, and um, there you can upload your D raw DNA data and compare to anyone else that you match who regardless of where they tested at they just would have had to upload there okay all right thank that's you that's a possibility too all right thank you yeah good luck thank you <laughs> i hope everyone enjoyed this and we'll see about uh doing some more um, next month is where do I go from here? Kind of like our let's talk meetings. And we'll see how it goes virtually. All right. I think that's it. Okay. Well, We're thanks doing a lot, quick. you guys. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you for coming, Luann. Yes, yes, thank you all for coming. Have a good evening. And hi, Leona. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Bye, Teresa. <laughs> Bye. Thank oh, you, God. everyone, for coming. Thank you, Lisa. That was very informative. Oh, yeah. God.
If you have an idea for a topic, let us know. <laughs> well, do. Otherwise, I guess we're just doing happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> happy hour is good also. <laughs> I think we're all going to watch the debate now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. See if, go, see if it goes better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Good night, Hope everyone. You enjoyed this. Good night. Um, you can email me at Macomb Co. GG and still answers that one too. So you'll get one of us. Okay. See you next month. Yes. Okay. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye. Thanks. MCGG extends its thanks to the Mount Clemens Public Library and its staff for hosting this Zoom meeting. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for watching. Our next meeting is scheduled for November 18th, 2020.